Shepard Data, the only game show where the questions are about data, AI, and maybe just a little bit of context. Let me go ahead and bring on our contestant, Prakalpa, the founder and co-CEO of Atlan. Welcome to the show. I'm kind of confused. I, I thought this was just a conversation. What do you mean, Shepard Data contestant? Well, it was going to be a conversation, but I figured let's go ahead and turn this into a game show because why not, right? So here's how it works. I'm going to give you a few categories and you pick one and then we'll see how well you know your stuff. What do you think? Okay. Uh, all right. Bring it on. Uh, I, will, uh, I will try my best. Okay. So your, your categories are mind the AI chasm, context or chaos, and governance gone wild. Which one are you starting with? I'll do mind the AI chasm. For 300 data points, according to an MIT study, what percentage of generative AI pilot programs fail to deliver measurable business value? I know this, 95%. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Very nice, 95%. Yes, nearly every company out there is experimenting. They're all launching their pilot programs, but very few are actually scaling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 been, I think ever since that MIT study, we wrote about this concept of the AI value chasm some time ago. Uh, but, you know, I think we, and then the MIT study happened and, you know, it became very clear that, you know, 95% of generative AI projects were not making it to production. And, uh, you know, most teams are not failing because they're not trying or they lack talent. It's just that they don't have, you know, we call it the context gap. Um, you know, how do you get data and meaning and governance to actually get these, these projects into production? Um, okay. Are you ready for round two? Okay. All right. So I made 300 points on that one, right? Okay, yes. You cool. got 300 points. Now the next right. one you get to choose context or chaos or governance gone wild. Which one are you choosing? Context or chaos. Let's do context or chaos. Okay. Great choice. I love that one. Now this one's for 200 points during Atlan governed virtual event, which I attended. It was it was great. I was just just telling you how awesome I loved it. Uh, Mastercard shared how they were able to cut the time to approve new data use cases. Do you remember by how much? Uh, I know the answer to this. Uh, it was uh, it was it was twelve weeks, I think, and it went down to three weeks. How crazy is that? Yes, first of all, you're right. That's four time improvement all thanks to context embedded right at the source. But how how crazy is it that you get to cut down time from 12 weeks to three weeks? Like that's mind blowing for me. Yeah, I mean, I think what's really cool about the the way the MasterCard team approached this is they call, they call it this uh, context by design mm -hmm. approach of uh, if you think about just the way you design your data product, if you can design it with context up front, then Ideally, all of the other chaos that happens afterwards, where someone requests access to something, and then you like you you figure out like who should I reach out to about this? Like who gets permission? Like you know, if you just design your data product with context up front, then you know it it becomes part of the process, and then everything downstream like approvals and so on becomes a lot more seamless. Um, so I think that approach of context by design. Uh, which their chief data officer and who talks about like really stuck stuck with me. Yeah, for me as well. And then now I, I'm just thinking of you and Atlan as like the, the queen of context. <laughs> I, I can't think of Atlan <laughs> without thinking of context anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> I will take on that, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, on, on, yes. I was gonna be, I was yeah. <laughs> I got myself a crown. <laughs> Uh, great. So, hey, you might get a crown at the end of this. Listen, we're, are you ready for the final round of Jeopardy data? Yes, yes. Jeopardy data. I think the, the winner gets a crown. Yeah, the, obviously the winner gets a crown. So we've got one category left here. We've got governance gone wild. It's worth 500 data points. And here we go. So Workday's executive, again, at the ReGovern Virtual Summit, he, he said that his team built a perfect data model, which honestly for me is questionable, but anyways, perfect data model, but it was perfect for which era? Well, not the AI era. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, <laughs> uh, but it was, it was like what, three years ago, actually, I think they were one of the most forward thinking teams and the way they built the data product operating model. It was so much to learn from uh, Andrew there uh, talks about 
how you know they built this perfect model of bounded context and data products for this era where humans consumed data. Uh, and they needed to move from that to AI consuming data and the world kind of like changed overnight in that Gen AI era. Huge congratulations. You have scored a perfect 1,000 data points. You are officially at the title of Jeffrey Data Champion. Here is your crown. Go ahead, put it on there. Thank you, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank, you thank you. Yeah. <laughs> are you proud of yourself? Um, I am very proud of myself. Uh, uh, on behalf of the whole Atlan team, I accept this like crown. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So this was this was so much fun. Uh, I do want to spend a little bit more time, though, with you, if that's OK. I want to talk more about context. Right. So on the show, you described AI as a super smart alien that's trying to understand your business. And I completely I love that analogy. So I want you to talk a little bit more about that. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, uh yeah, I think the the interesting thing about AI is we have unlocked this intense amount of intelligence. Like, you know, if you think about the language model, the interesting thing, like, you know, it's it's called a language model for a reason. It's really good at understanding language. Uh, but who teaches it meaning? Uh, and meaning is so unique to every business and every context, right? Like I was talking to a CIO uh, the other day and he said, uh, on the open internet, TAM might mean a hundred things. In my company, TAM means total addressable market. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, if I, like, like, for example, like if I say A to you, like, what does yeah. it mean? Uh, account executive, American ego. I don't know. I could think of a couple of other things. Yeah, exactly. Right. And like, you know, if you think about like, depending on the context of who you're talking about, like, it's, it's interesting. And Joe talked about like analytics engineer is also A, right? Like, you know, it's like there's so many different versions of A oh, yeah, as a word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, or Albert uh, Einstein. This, Hold on, it could be Albert Einstein. I just thought of that, <laughs> right? And so, if 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 an end user asks this question, like, tell me about how our AEs are doing in the company, you know, uh, well, what AE? Uh, even if it's AE is equal to account executive, are they rammed? Are they not rammed? And all of these things, like you, you know, when we talk about this concept of talk to data or how do we have AI like act as an analyst. Often as data people, we talk about the same concepts we used to talk about in the pre-AI world. So we say, how do we define revenue, right? Like what is the semantic layer for it? But we forget that humans have this context in our head that, you know, if a human analyst was asked this question by a sales leader about how are our AEs doing, they would have a better answer. Like they would not think it's American Eagle, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, but AI doesn't know that. And so there's these layers of context that you have to teach teach AI about uh, for it to actually become a meaningful part of your business. I think of it as like, it's almost like you have to think of it as like it's an intern and it's day one on the job. And how do you teach it all these things that you need about your business? Yeah, a lot of people call AI just like a really ambitious, really smart intern, but doesn't have like it, it doesn't have the context. It comes back to that that same word yeah. that we've been talking yeah. about. Yeah. So quick quick question here. How does Atlan help your client? How do you help your customers keep that context? Yeah. So we think of ourselves as a context layer for data and AI. Um, so what we do is, you know, as I think about this, this problem or this multi-level problem of creating the context layer for data and AI, uh, I think the first the first layer is how do you create the like how do you bring together your data ecosystem? Like what data exists, unstructured, structured, how is it all connected to each other? How do you automate that? That we, we think of that as the context extraction layer. Uh, mm -hmm. The second layer is how do you have the humans across the ecosystem build the meaning layer and the governance layer, right? Uh, how do you like that's all context in humans' heads? And how do you almost use AI augmented approaches? Like how do you read through, you know, conversations on Slack, but also how do you get humans to like add these concepts? Uh, and then eventually, how do you activate this? Uh, mm -hmm. How do you activate these? And, you know, traditionally, Athlon used to activate this in a lot of BI workflows. We used to be brought to, to the ecosystem, this word called active metadata. So how do mm -hmm. we take metadata and bring it back in a BI tool? How do we bring it back in Slack? How do we bring it back in places where people are, need, where humans need this context? And what's been most exciting in the AI world is we launched our MCP server. 
we launched our metadata lake house, which are all these like AI native formats for agents to directly consume this context and work with it. Uh, that's how we, we help our customers bridge what we call the context gap of taking AI from pilots to production. Great. Yeah. And I think I really appreciate you sharing that. The last question I had for you here is what is your advice for data and AI leaders that are listening to us right now? What, what's that next step they need to take? Yeah. Uh, what's been most interesting to me is as I've had conversations with data and AI leaders, there, there's some data and AI leaders that are the most empowered they've ever been. Uh, like Andrew from MasterCard, for example, he said this. He said that now AI has democratized the, the in some ways, the business use cases and made it a pull. And they know they need data. They need context. Without this, they cannot operationalize and productionalize their use cases. And so the best data and AI leaders that I know are invested significantly in building the foundation uh, for how do we build the foundation for AI to really get productionalized in the business? The reality is AI is still very early in, in enterprise, right? Like it's it still is. very early. There's a lot of adoption and an adoption curve that, that, that needs to happen. But in this world, speed is a moat. The companies that get there earlier, the companies that get there faster will create competitive advantages in a way that the next set will be left behind. Uh, and I think the best data and AI leaders are just not waiting to build a foundation. Uh, context readiness takes time. Building these foundations takes time. So, uh, you know, I think the I, I personally believe the company that builds the best um, context foundations um, for, for AI uh, will be the ones that, that will get most successful with AI. And, and that makes sense, right? You're right. This does take time. So the advice to just start sooner than later, because you can't just wake up one day and say, hey, let's do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, Prakalpa, first of all, congratulations again on getting that award, that crown, that championship of Jepper data. Woo! <laughs> I love it. Amazing conversation. I really appreciate your time here. And I encourage my audience to go to atlan.com, follow Atlan on all social media platforms, and just stay in touch with Prakalpa, follow her as well on all social media. She, she's always posting amazing, great content. Oh, thanks, Kate. This was amazing. This was so much fun and I followed your content forever. So I'm so excited we got a chat. <laughs>